Hey guys, Anders here with a video on the new changes to Serendia Elvia. This is the largest shakeup to these zones we've seen in a while. We've got this patch on test server last Friday, and I went ahead and compiled all the changes we we're going to see once it went live. But I wanted to wait till today to see how they went live in Korea. Sometimes they do have changes. And sure enough, there were a few important ones that got added in there. So with that said, I will be going over all seven spots and their changes. But before I do, I need to go over a couple of things about Elvia in general since some things have changed if you're new elvia is an alternative version of the beginner zones in serendia there is a lot of lore reasons for this but all you really need to know is what previously were leveling zones in the very very early game have become high end zones with some of the best silver per hour in the game the unique mechanic to serendia elvia is the spirit weapons or elvia buff these are three Okiara, Valtara, and Narc buffs that you can get. Each one has an element, and depending on the element, you will do significantly more damage in whatever zone you're in. Each zone has an element also assigned to them, but really don't worry too much about that and the elements. Just be aware that they exist. The spirit weapons or the Elbia buff is what's really important, and they appear to you as you grind in an area at a chance or so an RNG drop. And if you interact with them, you will get a buff of 10 minutes that will empower you with extra damage to those monsters in that area it's really really powerful what's new with this patch is the spawn rates for these spirit weapons or lb above have increased by a crazy amount in every single spot but you now have a limit you now get a debuff of 10 minutes when your lb above runs out so if you drop another Elbia buff or spirit weapon, you will not be able to use it till your debuff runs out. This makes it so you can at most use Elvia weapon buffs for 30 minutes every hour. Now, if you were already a veteran grinder in these areas, you'll know sometimes you can get really lucky and have a full hour of Elvia weapon buffs increasing your income as your grind speed is really, really fast. So with this new change, we have less variance, more people getting Elvia weapons, but less potential for silver per hour technically. Another new thing we have for all zones is an optimal AP range. So optimal AP zones are not very common in the game, but they do exist in Medaya especially. They basically cap your power, so you're not as efficient grinding if you're over or under the necessary base AP for that area. So let's take a look at our first zone, for example, Biragi Den. Biragi Den has an optimal AP now of 240 to 270. So if you have 270 Kudam AP, you would theoretically grind about as fast as someone with the same class but having 301 Kudam AP. Of course, there are a lot of things to take into account as well, but that's the simplest way of thinking about it. Uh, since we also touched on Baragi Den, let's go through it. We can see that some things happened. <laughs> a lot of nerfs. So shard drops are nerfed. Uh, Blackstone drops are nerfed. Accessory piece drops are nerfed. Boss spawns are nerfed and Elvia weapons are massively buffed. For Baragi, we got some BMC and Seed of Void buffs, which are nice as well, but that is one of the few areas to get buffs like this. If we go to Alter Imps, very similar. No nerfs to Beck spawns, but defense of monsters has increased. That's bad. At least if you get a beg to spawn, you will at least have a higher chance for shards, which is good. But otherwise, very similar situation as Baragi Den. Pearlabus has basically done is nerfed the drops to compensate for the increased Elvia weapon buff. But uh, we'll see how it pans out. As we move on to the next one, Castle Ruins, it's another one that got hit pretty hard. So secret orders are the most important thing for you in this grind. 80% decrease in that drop rate. It's insane. 16% tank your monsters as well but buffs to the al rundi boss itself so when you do get a uh, seeker order to drop you'll be able to get more stuff from that guy the range is now 250 to 280 one of the best spots i think for those coming from seasons and trying to catch up quickly so we'll see how it ends up actually being after these changes swamp fogan my favorite spot in serendia elvia received a mix of buffs and nerfs but i'd say it came out ahead it looks to be a very strong spot after all these changes the money was never really top tier for elvia standards but you could definitely get up there i think the most i ever managed was close to 800 million an hour uh, the only downside i see see is if you need those blue shards you're gonna be struggling after this patch since those got nerfed naga swamp is in a similar situation to fogans they buffed the drops and mechanics of the area which frankly needed to happen i think naga is 
was the least popular of the seven zones before this patch so they increased some defenses and hp pools but they scaled back the hp increase on naga captain it used to be a hundred percent increase now it's only 50 percent when it went live in korea so that's good i have high hopes for this naga spot hopefully it's really good bloody monastery got nerfs uh, to red bell monsters and spawns accessory piece nerfs as well 50 percent increase defense for the red bell monsters is a big increase we'll see how it pans out they also can't drop the red bells anymore and those spawns on paper it doesn't look great but we'll see finally or camp the top dog the best silver per hour spot in elvia the spot other zones were supposed to get buffed up to actually got some nerfs so 50 percent less boss spawns is pretty drastic uh, 10 percent tankier monsters used to be 20 percent on test servers so that's a positive at least it's not as bad and bmc and blackstone's drop rate nerfs with the lva weapon changes i think gone are the days where you could make over a billion silver at orcs and bloody monastery if you're lucky this is the way i see it really i think we've kind of normalized serendia elvia income so the top end is lower but the bottom end should be higher than valencia spots so the lower gs people can benefit but i really can't help but think this makes catching up to higher gs players a lot harder if you start the game today before you could do seasons early graduate get carried in castle ruins get enough to grind bloody monastery or oryx and you're making insane money as long as you're you know putting in the hours and playing the right classes now you can do the same but you're limited on your progress even more the other side of this i think is frankly silver nowadays is not worth much so lower silver generation will even out the market and make your silver be worth more in the long run so that's good for everyone but i think calfi and elvia is also being developed right now and i don't know i just can't help but think these changes are maybe linked to have calfian be the new king of silver per hour whenever that comes out later this year spread out the player base i think that is what they want to do in terms of gs by forcing optimal ap and then with calfian having at least seven zones we may be looking at a lot of variety for pve in the second half of the year so these changes may, may not look that bad come the end of the year so that's the changes for elvia let me know what you guys think about the changes tell me if you think that the new pet looting changes will make this a non-issue and we're still going to be making a lot of money everyone's going to be happy you know let's hope and as always thanks again for watching thanks for listening i'll see you all in the next one take care